Greetings, class. You have reached the Human K channel. Today, we're going to learn more about an interesting theory called Protection Motivation Theory. This theory has had a big effect on how we think about persuasive speech and behavior. Rogers came up with it in 1975, and he changed it in 1983 so that it would be easier to understand how our brains work when we decide to follow or ignore advice. Protection Motivation Theory's main goal was to shed light on behaviors that protect health in healthcare settings. As you can see, the goal of the protection motivation theory was to fill in the gaps in our understanding of the mental and emotional factors that drive protective actions. It pointed out that the problems with earlier theories were that they didn't take into account the factors that are linked to risky and safe behaviors. For example, it didn't talk enough about the idea of response effectiveness, which is a key part of changing behavior. Also, the protection motivation theory recognized that the things that make people act in adaptive ways are much more complicated than first thought. These things include threats and coping appraisals. Protection motivation theory was more than just a list of things that make people change their behavior. It went into detail about how motivation works by explaining two cognitive processes, threat appraisal and coping evaluation. These steps help us figure out how big the threat is, how vulnerable we are to it, how much it will cost to deal with it, and how well we think we can handle it on our own. Protection motivation theory helps us understand the complex reasons why people change their behavior by taking these things into account. Protection motivation theory says that the desire to do what is suggested comes from a state of mind that is shaped by cognitive processes that moderate the effect of fear please. In this case, fear appeals, are any kind of communication that includes one or more of two or three things that make people think. These processes involve figuring out how bad a threatening event is, how likely it is to happen, and how well a coping reaction works. For these ways of thinking to lead to safe actions, their effects need to be additive. In other words, all of our beliefs about the danger, how bad it is, how likely it is to happen, and how well our coping strategies work must be strong enough to affect our behavior in a way that is helpful. The creation of protection motivation theory was a big step toward resolving the contradictions in the research about how fear appeals change people's attitudes and what they do next. It put together the most important things about fear appeal and the cognitive factors that explain how feelings affect behavior and attitude change. Protection motivation theory has done a good job of explaining the complicated mental processes behind protective motivation by giving a framework that is both complete and easy to understand. So, the idea has been used in areas other than health, where it was first used. Even though the original protection motivation theory model worked well, it was missing some key factors. But after more study, the framework was changed to include self-efficacy, how people see rewards and costs, and how rationally they make decisions. This updated model now has seven variables, such as factors for mood, coping, and assessing threats. The new core nomenclature of protection motivation theory, which is made up of five factors, has been widely used in many areas of science. Protection motivation theory has become much better at predicting the future and easier to use since it has been made more practical. Researchers can now test the effect of each variable on its own with the new version. In comparison, the original model said that cognitive factors work together in a way that made motivation stronger. Increased reasons to protect the theory was made to explain actions that don't follow the rules for making good decisions. It adds what is called ownership appraisal as a third cognitive factor. Accepting personal responsibility for protecting oneself is part of this dimension. When figuring out how serious a threat is and how vulnerable they are, people figure out how much responsibility they should take for adapting their behavior. This process of figuring out who is responsible for what leads to figuring out how to cope. Even though augmented protection motivation theory adds new aspects, it is still being tested to see how well it works in different situations. Researchers are looking into how well it works and if it can be used outside of the original areas of study. More study is needed to figure out how well it works and where it can be used. Protection motivation theory has shed light on what makes people change their behavior and start living a healthier life in the field of health and fitness. Perceived susceptibility and self-efficacy have been found to be the most important factors in getting people to change their behavior. These results have important implications for getting people to change their health-related habits. Protection motivation theory has also been used in the tourism business to look at how travelers act to protect themselves while on the road. Researchers have found that both coping appraisals and danger appraisals make people more likely to take precautions and reduce health risks while traveling. This knowledge has helped improve the safety and well-being of tourists. With the spread of technology and digitalization, the protection motivation theory has helped us understand how people react to threats linked to technology. 
It has been used to find out what makes people do things like follow information system policies, use secure passwords, back up their data regularly, and run software in a private setting. But it's important to remember that the importance of protection motivation theory principles can change depending on how they are used in security. Scholars have suggested two changes to the model that would make it better at explaining things. In the first update, the role of regret as a feeling that affects how we think about threats and how we act to protect ourselves was added. This acknowledges that feelings can make motivation stronger. In the second change, factors like moral obligation, social impact, and control variables are added. This extended version of the protection motivation theory has been shown to be very good at predicting behavior, as it can explain over 60% of the differences in adaptive behavior. Notably, response effectiveness was found to be the only coping appraisal factor that affected adoption, while moral obligations predicted intention but not social impact. When the protection motivation theory was applied to anti-plagiarism software, it became clear that context also plays a big role in the adoption of protective behaviors. Staff rank and gender have been found to play a role in how these security methods are used. This new way of looking at the protection motivation theory is useful because it shows how important control factors are for understanding the predictive power of a person's sense of responsibility and the effect of peer pressure. These changes improve the theory's ability to explain things even better. Also, by adding expected regret as an indicator of motivation, the protection motivation theory was able to take into account psychological factors that affect how different people respond to adaptive behavior. But it's important to remember that the theory's ability to predict the future depends on the idea that people can think clearly about problems and how to deal with them. Protection motivation theory can only be used in certain conditions and with certain groups of people, like children, because people don't always make rational decisions. It also believes that people's mental processes are the same, no matter their personality traits, how vulnerable they are to threats, their dispositional factors, their gender, or their age. Concerns have been raised about how to use the response cost variable, especially when it comes to habits that protect health. It's still not clear if the cost of adaptive behavior should be taken into account separately from the projected loss of rewards. Also, it's not clear whether response cost means the loss that comes with changing behavior or the possible loss that comes with doing what's suggested. Scholars have come up with a number of ways to improve the theory's ability to explain things and answer these criticisms. Protection motivation theory could include things like moral duty, the risk of social disapproval, and a preference for time. These factors can help explain why people plan to do what is asked of them in certain situations. This gives us a fuller picture of how people get motivated. Our talk about the protection motivation theory is now over. Protection motivation theory has made important contributions, but it is important to realize that it needs to be improved and taken into account in different situations. We appreciate your time today. I want to encourage you to look at the research and have critical conversations about how protection motivation theory can be used and expanded in your areas. Have a nice day.